morning, everyone, and welcome to Worship Online. This morning, we are celebrating Christian, Christian Aid Sunday. Uh, it will be different from most Sundays when we are thinking about our house clouds collections and the different forms of other ways of fundraising. And it will be different from those services we have met face to face. But nevertheless, this is a time of worship. It's also, in our Christian Aid setting, a time of information and a time of challenge. To that end, I'm using some of the Christian Aid resources that have been published for this year, which I found helpful, and I hope you do too. We're going to begin with a statement that has been forged by the words of the Old Testament prophets and by the thinkings of, of modern prophets, their concerns and their hopes, their crusade on behalf of creation, and likewise those who suffer because of the misuse of the greatest material gift we could ever receive, that of our natural world. This is the statement, and it sets the scene for our service. We call for justice for those who have done the least to cause the climate crisis, but are suffering the most. We are called to imagine how the world could be, but beckon everyone to do all they can for the restoration of creation and the flourishing of all to the glory of God. Our call to worship is a call that brings us down to earth. Psalm 96 verses 11 to 13 begins with a picture of the earth as it should be but ends with a warning. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. They will sing before the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his truth. We we'll continue in our worship by singing a hymn that lets us praise the world and those in it and as a prayer for creation as it should be. And we sing one of my favourite hymns for the beauty of the earth. Oh, 
I want you to imagine in this opening prayer that the earth, the sea, and the fields have their own character. They're only able to speak as though they were human beings. It's a prayer, a type of prayer we don't often offer in church. It's a prayer of lament. In these times, perhaps we ought to lament a little bit more. Let us pray. O oh God, the heavens are not glad. The earth does not rejoice. Warming gases fuel the atmosphere. Pollution turns clean air foul. Climate breakdown wrecks havoc. The sea roars with grief at all the plastic that fills it, of the destruction of the coral reef. The fields exclaim despair for delayed rains and prolonged drought, for species extinction on a daily basis. No song of joy rings out from the trees of the forest, decimated by forest fires. How long, O oh Lord, how long until your justice comes for all your creatures and all the earth? In you, we put our trust. Amen. Our prayer of confession. O oh Lord, we plead forgiveness for our selfishness, our greed and our pride. For the urgency of this hour, wasted by ineffective decisions, denied by economic interests, Christ, our Saviour and Lord, forgive us for our selfish behaviour. For the joy of human love fractured by forced migration, crushed by bereavement, lost to typhoons, floods, starvation, O oh Lord Jesus, bringer of justice, forgive us for the state of the world and the people. Hear our prayers, O Lord, and may we know that in all of this, even in all of this, we are still forgiven for Jesus' sake. Amen. We continue in worship as we sing the hymn, The Kingdom of God. Okay. 
Christian Aid Week. Christian Aid is always about stories. It's introducing us to people who face great challenges in other parts of the world so that we can learn to empathise with them and see things through their eyes. Uh, we're about to hear the story of Florence. Florence is a woman who sings in a deep, joyful voice and lifts the spirits of all those around her. She is full of love and life and laughter. Um, but life wasn't always like that for her. A few years ago she lost her husband and she faced uh, a really trying time carrying water over 10 kilometers to her farm until Christian Aid uh, came into her life and, and changed all of that. We're going to hear her story now. Kwa <laughs> Lakini ngai ya ndeze siya, o ino akwa tiye vina. Kitho angasu wa nikuwe dae, o ite kika ini ndi vena. Kudina ni mbeza, nguko ya kwendo ya ya na ya nyo kivu. Nua nita nka umi mbeza, isupa u. Ngeza ni iwe ni mudhanga uwe. Kwa na wataki nduja kwa nguwe wamo yo. Tusikuma tuu no nye bae nove ya kibeti. Ina mutezi bibi nyo nguwe ni. Na si nde dhezi ya. Nima ye. Tulu joku. Kwa na ye. Na malunga mwongo. Kwa na nima ye. Tulu joku. Kwa na ye. Tulu joku. Where's 
Nindu matungi ya mwea, kiasi wanga ya meke nesa. Angiasi ya, pavu mbezi usi na umye, wanga ya ongelele vo. Siye mamba ni salama, siye mamba ni salama, niye mamba ni salama. Kivu ya, kivu ya siya na siya kasika rena mungo kula si. Angivu ya mbua, iwi ya nduweza kila mtunga kwa toka indo. We're going to continue now by singing our next hymn, God in His Love for Us lent us this planet. John chapter 15 verses 9 to 17 reading from the NIV as the father has loved me so I have loved you now remain in my love if you keep my commands you will remain in my love just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learnt from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you 
so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Praise be to God for the reading of his word. I've titled this word Christian Aid Week every week. As we listen to John chapter 15, I hope you don't think that we've cut the service into two. The pandemic and the COVID crisis and the lockdowns have allowed us to use our memories, none more so than your speaker this morning, who reflects on childhood and its innocence. We went on holiday every year once, and at the end of our holiday, our cases were deposited on top of a large wardrobe, and there they stuck until the next year, unless some family celebration took place in between. And it was as though we'd done something different for one week of the year, and then life returned to the normality to the next year. I don't think that, like our cases at the end of our holiday on top of the wardrobe, I hope that you haven't felt that the service is now cut in two. We've done our Christian aid bit for another week, another year, and that we can put it away uh, until next year, and that we go on to something more important. I want to emphasize that this word and this service is all of one piece. And so from John 15, I want to point out two responses. A response to life, to people, and to God and his world. It's God's response of love. And then the second response is our response, and our response is the one of challenge. And so we tackle, first of all, God's response of love. When we lived in Huddersfield, there was a local preacher, a respected local headmaster, uh, named Ronald. And by reputation, uh, Ronald was uh, a different sort of thinker. It's reputed that in one service, away in the Cole Valley, that he took a service and managed to go through the whole hour without mentioning the name Jesus. I don't know how he did that. I can't see how worship can be without Jesus. I can think of a w one or two hymns that don't mention him, uh, but the whole focus of our life and the whole focus of our worship is Jesus. We are called Christians, which means that we are following a person, Jesus Christ. And when we come to worship, we are singing in the name of Jesus. We are worshiping in the name of Jesus. We are praying to and in the name of Jesus. And when we set the table out and remember, then we're remembering the sacrifice of Jesus. Greater love of no man than this, then he lay down his friends and lay down his life for his friends. And then when we are sent out, we're sent out in the name of Jesus, either by encouragement or by command, by coincidence. And, uh, and uh, this is only a cul-de-sac for those who go to the Lington Free Church. If you read Mike Calvert's fascinating book on the history of the Lington Free Church, you may have crossed come across the names Ray and Edna Goodman, who turn up in the story. Well, Ray and Edna Goodman could have been present at that service with their children, Heather, Vivian and Jane, uh, because it was at that church that Ronald is reputed to have conducted that time of worship. No, we have Jesus at the centre of our worship. Charles Wesley said it all, Jesus, the name I over all in hell or earth or sky. Brother John, in 1752, on the 20th of June, went to Chester, and there he sat down, it, or he stood at six o'clock, as others sat down in front of him, and uh, the people, apparently of Chester, behaved themselves impeccably, apart from the landlord, who had a shout and then ran away. And then John describes in his diary, which is wonderful reading, that he declared to them the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't do better than that. And I say hallelujah to that. But, having said that, 
then there is a temptation which we sometimes fall into, uh, preachers as well as listeners, a warning to all of us, then when we focus on the text, greater love is no one than they lay down his nerve for his friends, that we merely mean personal salvation for sinners. And if we do that, then we reduce the message by a considerable amount. I beg you to listen to this scripture. It comes from Paul in Colossians chapter 1, if you want to look it up, and it says this, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Missing out a bit, and then it says this, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood. And so we limit Jesus if we don't include this reconciliation, note the words, of all things. So Jesus' finished work on the cross is the complete work of saving and redeeming the world, including the created world. Notice Paul's emphasis, not just on all people, but to reconcile to himself all things. I quote again, and I won't overload you with quotes, especially when they come from Paul with his concentrated thinking, but Romans 8, creation will be liberated from its bondage to decay and will be brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. From that I believe that God's heart for the world is shown by his sacrificial love and it is to restore creation to what it was at the beginning, if you like, to restore Eden. So God's heart is for Florence, whom we saw earlier. God's heart is for Rose, and I don't know whether you picked up this leaflet about her. It turned up in our paper as an insert, and Rose comes from Kenya, and at 68 years old, a grandma, she makes a six hours trip every other day to collect water for her farm and for her family and for her, for her fields, for themselves. It, it, the, the, the whole process of, of life in Kenya is of drought and of famine and of climate change, uncertain climate. And so I believe that the God we believe in and the God we love and cherish and the Jesus who died to save us, in fact, wants the wholeness of life. I love that word shalom, that flourishing of the whole of creation, and that is for everything and it is for everybody. But you will come back to me if you were in church now, and I, I would invite your response to look at empty chairs, and they'll probably be shouting at, at me and saying, well, that isn't the world as it is. And so I think you may sense already what you know, the next response is, our response. And it comes when Jesus says at the end of the passage that Diane read, this is my command, that you love one another. I don't want you to assume that it was only for a small group of followers huddled in a room that Jesus said those words, that the saviour of the world was about to give himself up to death and suffering. The sort of feeling that you come through that statement could be then, this is going to hurt you folks, but keep loving one another, keep being the current word is keep being kind to one another. You know this challenge of love comes down to us. And what's it saying to us? I believe it's saying to us, Christian Aid Week is every week. Because if we are called to love one another, then we are called to Christian Aid. And it doesn't matter what society you, you, you cherish or what society you belong to, uh, in terms of your support, and it, it is the same thing. It comes down to Christian aid. I've been learning a lot about pan in the word pandemic. I'm sure you know what it means, but just in case, that the pan isn't about Peter Pan. It's not about uh, the Greek god, the, the god of pan, who is the god of nature. Pan means universal. 
We shan't forget, or I won't forget anyway, the man from the WHO, and I don't want you to think that that's the man from the Prue. He had a much more sinister message to give than that. The man from the World Health Organization, whose surname had Jesus in it, which is significant perhaps, invisibly moved when he said that we are entering a time of pandemic. I don't think then a lot of us realized what that was about. I think that we do now. And the word pan comes down to us and teaches us at this time that the world is a small place and that we are interdependent, that COVID has no boundaries. The Kent variant will travel all over the world. The South African variant will travel likewise universally. And that means that the Indian tragedy is our tragedy. And our tragedy is the Indian tragedy. In other words, we are interdependent, we are interconnected, and perhaps this pandemic has taught us that, and taught us something we should have known already, but now we do in greater force. And so we don't just sympathise with people all over the world, which is part of our, 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 our motive for Christian Aid Week in times past. We more than do that, we empathise with them. We enter into their griefs, and we enter into their worries, we enter into their helplessness, we enter into their frustration, we enter into their, their anger. When I was being trained for ministry, the one thing I was told never to say is people confided with their concerns and their struggles and their sorrows and their illnesses, you were never supposed to say, I know how you feel. I am, I'm tempted to say that in these days, at least we know some of what other people feel. We're able to say, I know what it's like. And so we are united in bearing one another's burdens and we are not united in sharing the unbounded, unstinting love of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are called to love one another. That's not just in one week in the year, it is every week. And then we will be fulfilling Jesus' command to love one another. I want to finish with two or three outcomes of all this. Because Christian Aid Week is nothing if it isn't practical. And so I want to say this, it may be a challenge, uh, but I will say it, that's the preacher's privilege. If we haven't looked into our own prosperity and practiced sharing, we are very hard-hearted indeed. And then secondly, if we are not feeling the struggles and the fear of our world, then we are being very insensitive. And then if we have not taken it all to God in prayer, then we're falling short of who we are as Jesus' people. I never cease reading the biographies of the greats, and I've just finished a biography of the great missionary Hudson Taylor. It's an inspiring story, it's also a very challenging story. In 1865, Hudson Taylor had a significant happening to him, and that was, of all places, on Brighton Beach. It was Sunday morning, and in normal times, Hudson Taylor would go to church. But do you know what? He forsook church. He couldn't stand going into a church and worshipping with a thousand people. Yes, I mean a thousand people, because a million people a day were dying without the knowledge of Jesus Christ in China. It was a significant experience for him, and so he prayed for 24 willing workers to go with him to China to evangelize, to take the Christian message in all its wholeness to that great nation. The next day he went into the bank and he put 10 pounds into an account under the name China Inland Mission. And after it, their biographer is written in uppercasing in capital letters with all the promises of Christ. Hudson Taylor's great mantra, if you like, was God's work, done in God's ways, will never lack God's supplies. Never underestimate the power of prayer. I have a colleague who lets us know the 
very, very sensitive times that she needs us to pray about and the people which she needs to pray about. And there was one issue a few weeks ago, she said that something that happened was breaking her heart. Just only a week ago, I walked with her around Drake Hot Water. It was a powerful experience. And she said, bless you and thank you for your prayers. The matter is resolved. Now I'm confessing that prayer is not always answered in that sort of way. way. Uh, but never underestimate the power of prayer. And so this Christian Aid Week is not the second week of May anymore. It is a consistent, persistent practice of self-giving and thereby we make a difference and in a way I don't know whether you've noticed we've come back to Jesus and these two responses in the reading from John chapter 15 they come together we take up the self-sacrifice of Jesus as we love one another we pray for what is laid upon us to pray we give as we see need we may not be going house to house this week. We may not be having our sponsored walk and supporting it. We may not be having the concerts or any other fundraising activities. It's not visible, but it could be a very significant time if we let go and let God have his way in us. And it will always be the way of love. Amen. We're going to sing the song, In My Life, Lord be glorified in my life, Lord, and be glorified today. intercession. O oh Lord, help us to see how to respond to this year's Christian Aid Week. There will be no public collecting, no sponsored event, no special concert. But there is a deeper response to be made, that of the offering ourselves in love to your world. May we all decide to do everything we can to love our world and its people more than ever. Help us to see that they need love in the many ways in which it is shown. May all who benefit from that love that comes from you know that it is only love when it is shared. May we know that it is Christian Aid Week every week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you that you are a God of second chances, recognising all the damage done to the earth by the worship of profit and possessions. We ask that we may usher in a better world with humility, justice and kindness at its heart. Give us courage to follow forces of justice and peace. Help us make a difference. May we know that you, Lord Jesus, are the one who inspires us and gives us strength.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask this prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We rejoice as we come to the end of our service together as we sing, You Shall Go Out With Joy. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace And the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you There'll be shouts of joy and the trees of the field Shall clap, shall clap the trees of the field shall clap their hands, the trees of the field shall clap their hands, and the trees of the field shall clap their hands, and you'll go out with joy. You shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace, and the mountains and the hills shall Shouts of joy, and the trees of the field shall clap, shall clap their hands. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The trees of the field shall clap their hands. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And you'll go. our blessing and our benediction. May God bless us with wonder at creation's glory. May God give us fury at creation's spoiling. May God bless us with courage at this critical hour. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon us and all creation this day and for the future to come. Amen. Thank you.